So tonight we're just sitting here talking about the topic of forgiveness. Oh. Hi guys, welcome tonight to Dynamic Jewels Talk. I'm excited you're here. Welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Make sure you like, subscribe, share. Well, share once you see it. We're happy to have you tonight and I am happy to introduce Miss Ariel here. <laughs> we're gonna have a good time. So tonight we're just sitting here talking about the topic of forgiveness. Forgiveness and how we forgive others, you know. Well, I was reading the scripture about um, for if you forgive men their tres their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you, you know, but if you don't forgive men their trespasses, neither will your heavenly father forgive you. And I think about that and I'm thinking about how many things happen throughout our life where we hold on to things and we hold on to even little things that can actually hinder us in the end. And we're just going to be talking about how the Lord freed us from um, holding grudges, even if it's simple, even if it's big or small, unforgiveness is unforgiveness. And um, I just have some questions for Miss Ariel, okay. and we're going to get started here. And so, <laughs> <laughs> so I just wanted you to share with us, uh, share with everyone that what you told me, basically um, your story of, you know, some of the things you've gone through. And yeah, man, it's. Let me tell you something. God is always faithful, yeah. and He's always good. And so. For me, I always felt like that um, I've just been a quick forgive, mm -hmm. like a person that's like, oh, whatever happens, and blah, 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 and they say sorry, and or whatever, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm pretty much a quick forgive, but there's things that have cut me deep into the core where it took a lot of, you know, praying and crying out to God to turn my heart yeah. for me to forgive that person. Mm -hmm. And, th and, you know, this happened with my dad, it happened um, with my stepfather, it happened with friends and stuff like that, so it was, it was really difficult. Yeah. I remember for my father that it was really hard because, of course, everybody wants, like, the perfect family and stuff mm -hmm. like that, and, and I didn't have a perfect family. You know, my dad wasn't there all the time, and that really hurt me as a child because I was just like you know why wouldn't you want to be there for me why wouldn't you want to see me I'm supposed to be your daughter da, 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 da. you know just regular woes that a child experiences when you have an absent parent right. and it wasn't until really a few years ago when my dad almost died he almost died mm. and to the point where like his heart wasn't really it was like pumping at 25 percent his kidneys was barely working like he was knocking at death's door and when that happened when I found that out and um, I was told that you know we don't know how much long you know how much longer dad will be will have and blah 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 and all this is going on we just want to keep him know it was like a slap in the face like I was so shocked and like I got I was sad because mm -hmm. I was like, man, if my dad dies, I don't have any memories with him. Mm -hmm. And that really tore me up. So I took it upon myself and I was just like, I got to let this stuff go. Because once I understood that, if I could understood from, understand from my mom that my mom is a human being, like we was talking earlier, like, you know, I understand that my mom is a human being first before my mother. Right. And so I'm able to respect her as a human being and and be able to, you know, understand the things that she went through that makes her, you know, the person that she is today. And I can respect that. Right. So I had to do that for my dad. I had to respect the fact that my dad had issues. Yeah. And issues that were very tough for him to overcome to the point where it brought him to death's door almost. And so I had to accept my dad and where he was. Right, right, right. 
I had to accept him where he was and, and not with any thoughts of or where he could be or how better it could have been I had to accept him at where he was as just yeah as this man yeah and that was tough that was tough because you still want to hold on to the all the Christmases you weren't there right you know you want to hold on to those things but I was just like I wouldn't be able to have any good memories or have peace about my dad if I didn't do that. Right. So once I finally let that go and um, it was like a weight released hmm. off of me. Once I finally like just was just like, you know what, God, I don't wanna hold on to this anymore. Right. And I let it go. And soon after he got in better health. Hey. He got in better health. That's good. Yes, granted, he still has his issues when it comes to for his health, but he's way better than what he used to be. Good. And then soon after that, I went and visited him. He flew me out there, and um, I went and visited him for like almost a month. And when I tell you, I had the time of my life. Wow. We were able to love on each other. And my father even, and I didn't even ask for this, my dad even apologized. He apologized to me because he was he, he told me he was just like I know I haven't been the greatest dad and he was like I, I, I'm sorry for that but I want to make it up now Wow. and I was just like it, it was so touching and I'm trying not to cry now but it was so touching and I was just like wow dad thank you yeah. it, it was good to know that you actually care and that it wasn't like you were doing this in spite of me. Mm -hmm. It was just being human. Yeah. Just having those faults. And once we were be once we were able to reconcile, we are we are now in a place where we can love on each other. We can enjoy each other's company. I love my dad to death. That's so amazing. Like I love he I love my dad. I call him daddy. But <laughs> I love my dad to death. And he has gotten so much better in that he would really try his best to do what he says he's going to do. Amazing. And he's come through quite a few times and I'm just so thankful for that because I'm just like, Lord, you answer prayers. Because you knew how tough that was for me to even release it and for me to still do it and you come back and you've given me the things that I mostly wanted from him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on. That's good. Hallelujah. It was That's good. It was, it was, it was it was tough. It yeah. was tough. Yeah. But I had to I had to let it go because like that, like the verse says, I don't wanna get to heaven and God's like, Well, Ari, you did such a good job but you still have unforgiveness in your heart. Right. And that too can disqualify you. Right. And I don't want that. That's good. I don't want to be disqualified for some unforgiveness yeah. in my heart. That's good. Yeah. There's a couple of points you were talking about, I mean, that I wanna um, pinpoint when you were speaking of uh, first of all accepting your dad as a human being you know a lot of times uh, my mom always tells me this too that sometimes when negative things come our way we have to remember that um, it's not like you said that a person is a human being and it could also be the, the enemy operating not necessarily your case but operating through people we forget mm -hmm. that you know we're wrestling against uh, it's, it's, it's also a spiritual battle that we're wrestling mm -hmm. with and uh, I like what you said about finally accepting him for who he is. You know, we're all at different points in our life. Letting your dad be him, you know, uh, we all make mistakes and you, you know, you embrace that. And, that, I, and then the second thing I, um, I heard when you were speaking was about love. You know, that scripture, love covers a multitude of sins. And that's what you did when you released him, you know, as hard as it was for you. Your love, I felt like, my pastor used to say, love the devil out of people, you know, your love arrested him. It covers a multitude of sins and it just caused him to, mm. it just, you know, embrace you even more, I think. Uh, yeah. And so, but that part about just accepting, you know, sometimes we have to take ourselves out and see people through the Lord's eyes, mm -hmm. knowing that we're all on different paths, you know, your dad had a different place we don't know what he's been going through for him to act that way toward you or you know right. you stepped out and you said i'm gonna i'm gonna just accept him 
for where he is and love him yeah. anyway. And, and that is such a beautiful, now I want to cry. Because <laughs> yeah, I had to think about it. It's not like he didn't want to be my dad. Right. He couldn't be my dad because of the things that he was wrestling with. Yeah. So it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to not be there for her or I'm not going to, you know, right. be there for Christmas. I'm not going to, it, yeah. it, it, it was never that. My, I knew, I knew my dad wanted to do things for me, but he couldn't because he was wrestling with the things of his own mind. Right. And it's so easy for all of us to get trapped in our own minds. Absolutely. And that's, and when you understand that that's, this is a struggle, mm -hmm. What, would you understand that, that that's what people are dealing with? You yeah. can, it's not you. Right. It's not you, it's the things that they're dealing with in their life. And, and, and once I got that understanding and I was able to release that, that's good. I think that even helped him. I think that he was able to like let go of some things because yeah. I felt like he felt like he was giving a, giving a clean slate mm -hmm. for him to start again. Yeah. And he really tried. Yeah, I mean, he still does. I'm talking like he's gone, but he still <laughs> he still, still does. Him. I talked to him a couple of days. Ago. <laughs> we still have him. <laughs> yes, he still does. He's he's doing good. good. Um, you know, he's in better health than what he was. Mm -hmm. You know, that the health still is a constant struggle. Struggle, and he still has his battles, just as we all do. Right. But because me and him have reconciled. We are a three-stranded cord, and that's really tough to break. Good. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he has me, I, you know, and I have him, and I'm just thankful that we're able to live. Yeah. And actually enjoy each other. Woo! I love yeah. it. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful ending. Yeah. You guys hear that out there? It is. God is able to do exceedingly above, above all. Absolutely. You guys think, and you know. When you feel like it's something is, is hard for you to do, mm -hmm. you just ask the Lord, Lord, you know what, this really hurt me. This really, this is really bothering me. He cares right. about every detail. I can't forgive this person. I'm really upset. Sometimes I have to do that. Lord, this, 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 and this happened. How on earth can I forgive this person? Mm -hmm. Deal with my heart. We can come to the Lord like that because mm -hmm. he's our father. You know, when you ask him to help you in those areas where we know at the end of the day, we're going to be standing before God that we need to release it anyway. Mm -hmm. So you ask God, Whatever it is, you know, you might have been abused. You might have been abused in some way. You might have whatever the case is. God is able to help you to forgive. You know, start with one step at a time, and then the Lord will He'll come through and uh, love. You know, He think about it like this too. You know, as God forgave us, He forgave so us did. from you know His mercies renew every day. Hey. So Hallelujah. we have to ask, Lord, give me your heart, you know, yeah. give me a heart like yours to love others, yeah. to forgive others. Even if somebody just cuts you off on the road. OK, look, let it go. I used to have a lot of road rage. <laughs> <laughs> OK, patience. Finally, Lord. I said, look, OK, I'm going to let that go because, yeah. So God is able to do, you know, exceedingly above all we ask for being big forgiveness, little forgiveness. He's mm -hmm. here with us. So. It's, it's 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 definitely a, a thing, and I mean, even in friendships where you have, you know, like I, I told you a story about how I had a dream, mm -hmm. I had a prophetic dream, I, I truly believe this was from God, that an old friend of mine, I was looking at an old friend of mine, and I was yelling at them, yeah. and I was telling them how much they hurt me and stuff like that, and and how could you do this to me, blah, 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 blah. And mind you, I hadn't seen this person in years. Wow. So I was just like, where did this come from? Mm -hmm. And as I got into my prayer and, you know, reading my devotional and things like that, and I got into my prayer, I, you know, heard God tell me that this is a place of unforgiveness in my heart. Ooh, wee. When oh, God wow. told me that, I was just like, Ooh, "All right, Lord, <laughs> did you feel like too you, much?" You had already dealt with it. I didn't it. know that it was still undealt with. Still undealt with. Yeah. I thought I had gotten over it, but clearly, I hadn't. That's good. You know, because in the dream, I was so fervent about how telling them. It, it, how much they hurt me and yeah. and their response to all of my you know ah yes 
was so nonchalant. They were just, they didn't care. And and as I was, you know, at talking about the dream with other people, and they were telling me that, one, you still have unforgiveness in your heart about this person. Mm -hmm. Two, God wants you to repent for that unforgiveness yeah. and, and release that. And then three, that that me doing these things are not for that person, but for me. Mm -hmm. Because clearly they were already in a place that yeah. was, you know, at peace, I'll say that, for lack of better words. But in the dream, I wasn't. So I have to get my peace back, because they already got theirs. Hey. So I went with after that, it took me, it took me, I didn't even pray about it for that whole week. I was just like, I'm not, I can't, I just gotta exit this out of my mind. <laughs> I can't think about that right now. Yeah. Because once you start thinking about certain situations where people have wronged you mm -hmm. and they might not even have cared or it, right. it just kind of ended on weird terms, yeah. that brings up some raw emotions. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and, it, and I was just like, mm. yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to think about it. I don't want to feel it. I don't want yeah. to hear about it. I don't want none of that. Yeah. But I was just like, really? Well, yeah. <laughs> like really he has better right progress. like really and i think it boils down to humility too we got to humble ourselves you know that pride gets in there it's like yeah well, okay because <laughs> i definitely i was just like i'm oh, not Lord. about to i'm not about to rehash this up but lo and behold <laughs> monday night when i was in um prayer at my church that i go to it came up it's like the Holy Spirit put that person in my mind, and I was just like, oh, yeah. "You just gonna make me pray about this, huh?" <laughs> and it was like a yup. Now get to praying. Because I love you. <laughs> right? Yup. Get to praying so we can break this off for you. Yes. And thank God for Jesus because He broke that off with of me. Yeah. And it wasn't going to be done through nothing else. If I hadn't was it praying and the Holy Spirit placed that in my mind, telling me it is time. And I was just like, you know what? All right, cool. I guess let me go ahead and pray. And as I started praying, those emotions started getting out. I was crying and I really realized how broken my heart was yeah. because I really loved that person. Yeah. And and in that I that I couldn't have them in my life anymore. Yeah. And that was bothering me too. Mm -hmm. And once, you know, God was just like, yeah, get it all out. Yeah. Get it all out. And I prayed and I kept praying and I kept mm -hmm. praying. And I just felt better about it. I was just yeah. like, oh, that right there, you know what you did is freeing yourself. When we forgive, we're freeing us. We're actually, when we have unforgiveness, we're bounding. You know, we're keeping ourselves bound. Yeah. You know, because yeah. we're holding, blocking our blessings, blocking our communication, fellowship with the Lord, and fellowship with God, mm -hmm. and you, you're, you're just holding yourself in a cage. You know, so when forgiveness, like you said too, is helping ourselves as well, helping us to become free. That burden lifted off of you. You need your freedom, your peace, no matter what so and so did or whoever. Mm -hmm. You're coming out of a cage. Yeah. You know. Cause I was just like, God, do I have to like be friends with that person again? And he, and it was like a no, you don't have to be back with them friends like that. Right. But you do have to forgive them, and you do have to let it go. Yeah. And and once I understood that in, in my prayer, and I was just like, Lord, break these chains yeah. and, and break that up off of me. That's good. And and I feel so much better about the situation now because. Again, it wasn't me. Mm -hmm. It was things that they were dealing with. Right. You know? Yeah. And and, and and think and people, you know, put their insecurities on you. Yeah. And make you think make you oh, think that good story. it's you. Huh? You just help you made me think of a story in my life. <laughs> No, as well. Yeah, know. it's 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 yeah. not. People will gaslight you, making it think, making you think that oh, it's you with the problem. Yeah, it's you that you know have these issues. It's you, you, you. Yeah. When it's not actually you, yeah. it's actually them and their issues that they have to deal with, 
you know, we all have demons that we have to war with. Yeah. And when people are not dealing with them, they project them on other people. Yeah. And once I understood that, and and God would made me see that. Yeah. Because He wasn't gonna let it go. Until I laid it down. Yeah. And I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and lay it down yeah. since you just keep putting it in me. Yes. Put it in my mind. And he was like, good. Yeah. And he broke it up off of me. And I just thank Ooh, the Lord. Hallelujah. My God from Zion. But yeah. I just thank him because he knew yeah. what was best. And he knew that I wasn't going to be able to elevate higher in him yeah. without letting that go. That's good. I love it. What was your story? Okay. Well, you made me think of two. When you mentioned the dream, that's mm -hmm. what the Lord dealt with me with. He spoke to me in a dream, too, because I thought I had released this person mm -hmm. already and moved on with my life. And right. then I'm seeing this person's face again. I'm like, okay. So God was, and I had been praying that week, Lord, deal with it. So he'll, you know, if you pray to the Lord, he'll bring it back up. And, and, and I just say, Lord, and I like what you said. You start praying for that person. Mm -hmm. And when I start doing that, he shows me things. But I wanted to share the story when I was in college one of my colleges in three. Um, I was uh, at a school where it was like, what, 99% Caucasian, and I was the only woman of color in the mm -hmm. class. And um, there were some other minorities there too, but the teacher really loved to pick on me. Like, I don't know what it was, but he would say little racist remarks. And like, mm -hmm. and then even my friends started noticing, like, why is he always like, Geared in, gearing this toward you and I was like I know don't you notice that so I knew that it wasn't just me seeing it and um, I felt like I was at a point where I was really thank God strong in the Lord <laughs> where I was in a prayer a lot and um, I said okay Lord and you know how I dealt with that I, I started it started happening it was happening consistently it wasn't just like one here it was like every time um, he would talk about topics he would make jokes my way and there were other minorities in the class that he would also joke about and just be very like very rude so i said okay i'm, I'm gonna handle it like this i'm gonna i'm gonna start praying for this man so I, I really took him before the lord and god for the first time he gave me such a heavy burden for this man like showed me all it was kind of like when you're in the spirit he takes you out of your flesh i went from flesh to like this man is crazy to like crying out for him because God was showing me all kind of things about him and I just started praying for him. I left it at that and um, things started turning around. You know wow. what? I started being his favorite. <laughs> wow. I started being his favorite student so much like to the point where people were getting jealous. It was just like, he wow. really like it. Everything just shifted. Everything turned around. He, he just loved me. He just. But it was the love, like you mentioned with your dad, you know, mm -hmm. that I think arrested him. I, I never lashed back. But I was at a good place uh, in the Lord where I was able to do that, where I was able to be like, let me pray for him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, see in God's eyes. But, but that same thing, that love, you know, I did it for myself, too, because I knew that something's wrong with this man. It's not me. I never had this. Like, I'm a free spirit. I don't usually know when racism, racism is in the room because I'm just like, hey, you know, I'm very like loving people like that but with him it was obvious and i said something's wrong with that and he's got something going on but the lord showed me that and i ended up being one of his favorite students and yeah that's my story so that was a cool little that's a light forgiveness story but yeah it was a cool experience to see god like turn turn Just that turn whole situation change. around yeah. yeah oh my gosh yeah wow. so that was good but yeah so God will do that. He'll show you, you know, that it's not, sometimes we think, we take it too personal, but we don't know what that other person's going through and what, you know, their issues are. And right. We have to take a step back. Always take a step back and say, okay, Lord, you know, know so who you are in Christ. Christ. Yeah. And once you know who you are in Christ, you'll know that whatever negativity is coming that's opposite of that, mm -hmm. it's not you. It's not, it's from the enemy, you know? Yeah. So that helps. Now I'm able to deal with, you know, praying for people. And that healed mm -hmm. me. Lord, let that cycle stop on him. Turn it back around. So I know there's a lot of people that have been hurt, broken, and yeah. God wants you to be free. free there's freedom that. in the Lord, you know. Um, um, forgiving others for being, I was bullied, you know. There's a lot of issues that we, we go through. Mm -hmm. uh, even then, I remembered praying about the situation. I didn't even know God like that, but I knew like I needed some help. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And things would turn around. So always pray. 
you know, always know that God is with you. And instead of receiving and embracing and holding that, like I said, you're always you're just holding that yourself in a cage. And God wants us to be stay free. Just stay free. You have that okay in your head. By on? his words, he decrees our liberty. Come on. And that's it. <laughs> is there anything else? Um Good talk. Yes, good talk, guys. <laughs> Thank good you talk. guys for tuning in. So I'm going to ask you to pray for the ladies tonight. Okay. If anyone's, you know, dealing with that, um, yeah. then dealing you will be that, free. Oh, yeah. All right, so thanks for tuning in, and we're just going to end this with prayer. Yes, yes. If you can, just, you know, close your eyes and act like you're here with us. <laughs> <laughs> Heavenly Father, Lord God, yes. Lord, we just thank you for today father god we thank you for your mercy that renews every day lord because by your mercy father god by your grace is the way that we're able to forgive lord yes. forgiveness is not in our nature lord god it is a supernatural thing it's a holy thing and we thank you for sharing your holiness with us father god to be able to forgive the people in our lives father god the people that we come in contact with the deep hurts that keep us, us awake and crying at night, Father God, that we are able to come to you and lay it at your feet, Lord God, and you break those chains of unforgiveness off of us, Father God, and you let us rest in your peace, Lord God. Lord, we just thank you for that, and we thank you for the new opportunities that you're going to bring us, Father God, for us being liberated in you, Lord God. Lord, we pray for these ladies that are watching for it, Father God, that, that they will be free from the hurt that is um, causing them, Father God, that's making them have unforgiveness, and that you will bless them, Father God, just like you bless us, Lord. We thank you. You are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that is there, and we just thank you and we praise your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Man. All right, guys. Thanks for yes. tuning in. Don't forget to share this with someone that you feel will it will last. Yes. Like, comment, and subscribe. Hey. Bless those who persecute you. Bless those who love to curse you. Right. Be happy with the happy yeah. and mourn with those who mourn. Bless those who persecute you. Bless those who love to curse you. Right. Be happy.